This is the story of how I spent part of an afternoon in a janitor closet. It all started with a call. We are from Company X and we represent Big Chain Department Store. Big Chain Department Store needs some industrial shelving in its janitorial closet. Can you do that? I said yes. Having done a brief stint on a janitorial crew a while back, part of me must have yearned to return to the janitorial closet and set it straight. I visited this one to figure out my bid, and it was disheveled and overflowing with boxes and cleaning gear and mops without handles. Everyone at Big Chain Department Store wanted it fixed, and somehow I saw myself as the guy to fix it. Just to be clear, Company X, the guys who hired me, have a contract with Big Chain Department Store, and I was coming in as a sort of freelancer to not only tune up the janitorial closet, but clean up a mess. See, now according to the manager of Big Chain Department Store, we'll call her Fiona, there was another crew in a few weeks ago to outfit the closet, only they ended up installing the equivalent of bookshelves in the space. Lots of them, tons of bookshelves, and these ended up being useless, and the closet quickly went to hell with nowhere to store stuff. Now, in my experience, a janitor closet can be both a home for mops and whatnot, and also a sort of clandestine place to hang out, possibly hiding from the boss and various mess makers of the world. Janitors need janitorial closets, and it's sometimes all you get on the job. This janitorial closet was neither well outfitted nor good for hanging out in. Plus, I'm not even sure Big Chain Department Store had a janitorial crew. It seemed like every worker I talked to had some experience with the closet. They weren't being clear, but I got the sense that maybe part of their duties involved sweeping up and changing trash bags and stuff like that. Said another way, it didn't really look like any self-respecting janitor was on duty and in charge of this closet. I started by emptying the closet out. If you're going to spend an afternoon in a janitor closet, you might as well make it a space you can move around in. I'd proposed two fixes to the company that had the contract with Big Chain Department Store. One was to build some shelves, and the other was to install some hangers for the million brooms and mops that had been stuffed into the closet. The deal is that you really don't need a million brooms and mops, even to clean a big chain department store, but these guys didn't seem to know that. Someone just kept buying more mops. I got the mop and broom hangers at Home Depot because I hate the plasticky ones I keep getting on Amazon, and after screwing them to the wall and hanging up a few mops and brooms, I felt a little bit of relief. I felt like the closet had a chance. Now, by the way, if you ever want to listen in on the behind the scenes employee conversations at Big Chain Department Store or a store like it, just get a job refurbishing the janitorial closet back by the break room. You're going to be there a couple hours and you'll find out that there's a new gal getting hired and she was learning the ropes and then there's another portion of the crew that was taking some kind of online job training course all afternoon. I gotta say, I really don't like the onlineification of training and learning and orientations and all that, but at least it sounded fast and easy for these guys. Everyone was speeding through the tests and getting pretty good marks. The only thing worse than being stuck working in a janitorial closet all day is for getting the right blade for your angle grinder, so you end up having to cut tons and tons of metal by hand with your pretty much dull hacksaw. Now, I could have run to the hardware store, maybe I should have, but that would have meant leaving my post in the closet and it just didn't seem right. So when you realize that you're very, very slowly cutting out some metal bookshelf brackets by hand, sawing at the bars of your cage, and your jail for the day is a janitorial closet, you gotta think that things could actually be worse or weirder or more basic or more absurd or something, but they were just what they were that day and I kept on sawing at that metal till I got it done. So what happens in a space like this over time? Does it last as the store changes over to the next department store and then that one changes over to the next one? Or does everything get gutted over and over again for each of the mall's new tenants? There's no way to control things from this place in the janitorial closet, 
Janitors and janitorial inclined workers will do their thing using or abusing this closet as they see fit. And the closet may end up being like a long standing thing or totally short lived. By the way, one oddity in here is that we've got like a 20 foot ceiling in this closet. So there's tons of potential storage space up there, like untapped potential you would not even believe straight overhead. If you were clever, you could rig up a sleeping loft 20 feet up that no one ever knew about and you could totally live in this janitorial closet. Okay, so one more attempt with my ill-bladed grinder and it was back to cutting at the bars of this prison cell. Never underestimate the power of hand tools. Similarly, never underestimate the incredible racket of sawing metal in a small janitorial closet. The sound was deafening. When cutting steel shells by hand in a janitorial closet in the back of a big chain department store, your mind may wander to an alternate reality in which all of humanity is globally exterminated in an instant, but your closet somehow shields you from the deadly force that wipes out all human life on the planet. And when you emerge from the closet, having built a few shelves, you're all alone, the only one left on earth. But then you hear voices in the break room and realize it's all good. The only thing getting wiped out is you as you cut more and more metal in the confined space of the janitorial closet. I know what you're thinking. Those shelves look kind of wiggly and flexible, but the deal is they are really mainly for storing big boxes of plastic bags and toilet paper, you know, like light stuff. So it's going to be all good at big chain department stores. Seriously, they're going to be okay. And on a job like this, the deal is that you've got to split the difference between the cost of materials and how long it's going to take you to prep cut, paint, fabricate, and install everything. You know, this is like an hourly job. So sure, a custom welded shelf system would be cool, all lacquered with several layers of carefully applied paint, but this is not the craft closet. Okay, so with useful and useless things hung on the wall and larger, deeper shelves installed at the back of the closet, it's time to reorganize a bit and see how things look. In a situation like this, the general motto is to leave it cleaner then you found it. You know, tidy, straighten up, get it sorted. There's so much junk in this room, but there's nothing you can really do about that. It's not your stuff. And the room is too small to honor the true scope of things janitorial, but it'll do, and it's slightly improved with the work that you've done. Then you've got to load up the rig and get out of there. Don't stay too long, no matter what you do. Thanks for checking out the project and subscribe to the channel for more wacky and interesting building related videos.